Yeah. All right, fam. What up? Uh, back here at BFR Motorsports, aka my driveway. <laughs> Maybe someday we'll grow this into something legitimate, but for now, it's just uh, me and the Mustang. So, fixing one of the things that has been driving me absolutely nuts ever since I bought this thing. Steering wheel. It's crooked. So, super, super, super simple fix. There are four bolts underneath the dash that secure the steering column to the dashboard frame. All you have to do is loosen these bolts and then jerk the steering wheel over to the side a little bit, get it as straight as you think you can, and then just tighten the bolts up. Super, super simple. Uh, you will need 5 sixteenths in order to get, uh, there's a panel that you have to take off. Um, it makes it a lot easier to get to two of the bolts. So that bottom panel has two bolts in it and they are 5 sixteenths. And then you will also need 13 millimeter in order to loosen the bolts on the bottom of the steering column. Once you take the panel off, just shimmy your way underneath and uh, loosen up those two bolts and then bang jerk your steering wheel over get it straightened out and then retighten you can sit i was concerned that i was going to get it straight and then get underneath it tighten the bolt up get back up and it will have somehow moved you know how shit like that goes when you're working on a car so uh i was able to hold the steering wheel with my left knee while i was sitting in the seat and then reach underneath and tighten up just one bolt so that it didn't move. And I am telling you, I am super happy. This thing is straight now. Oh my God, it was absolutely driving me nuts. So the big thing that you wanna look at is, right, that bolt that's inside the gauge cluster and that bolt inside the gauge cluster and the distance when you sight it, the distance in between the steering wheel, and that's basically how I got it as straight as I possibly could. So one more thing fixed on the Mustang. I also threw on a pair of three millimeter wheel spacers and let me see if this works. All right, so one of the other major issues with this is that as I was turning the wheel full in reverse, the tire was rubbing on the spring perch for the coilovers. So therefore, every time I turned the wheel when I was in reverse, never did it when I was forward, only reverse. Um, because you just don't, unless you're pulling into a parking space, you really don't need to turn your wheels that much. Uh, so, but it made it a bitch backing out of my driveway and you could feel the tire like grabbing and dragging on the spring perch. So let's see, I threw on a pair of three millimeter spacers and I think it might be just enough to clear it. Let's check. Holy shit, I think it worked. Uh, I was pretty worried that three millimeters just would not be enough. Uh, and if it wasn't, um, I was just gonna grab a set of five millimeters next week and throw on that set of fives. But it looks like we're gonna clear. So uh, I'm gonna move the Explorer forward out of my way and we're gonna back up out of the driveway and go for a ride. All right, let's go. Well, the good news is my steering wheel is very, very, very straight. The bad news is wheels are still scrubbing on the springs when I back up. So we're gonna have to order a pair of five millimeters. Shit sucks, but hey, that's the way it goes. Uh, so I had to run off to Walmart and uh, grab a couple of quarts of oil for the wife's explorer. So uh, I'm out of here, go for a ride. All right, well, uh, yeah, I got some nice, nice grease on my face. 
I'll just make it worse. <laughs> While uh, discovering uh, a couple other steering issues, uh, straightened out the steering wheel and decided to check out the tie rods and um, the next thing is going to be the steering shaft. I have a feeling that the the rag joint is totally worn out and that is why uh, my steering wheel has so much play in it. But uh, to tighten up my steering and fix the bump steer, got a bump steer kit and also got uh, new sway bar end links because this thing has been lowered very much uh, and the sway bar is not at the right angle. So I got the sway bar end links uh, from LMR. Yeah. Ordered from LMR and, uh, they are for lowered Mustangs. So, uh, pro tip, when you go to replace the sway bar end length, uh, first off, you're going to need a 15 millimeter ratchet. And then I just held on to the end length with a pair of vice grips and uh, got the nut off the top and the bottom. But I want to do, uh, right now I'm actually working, finishing up the bump steer kit on the passenger side. And I want to do the sway bar end link and you can't get the sway bar off uh, the end link unless you also unhook the other side. So you have to unhook both sides at the same time. Uh, so make sure I was trying to just jack up one side of the car and do one side and then lower it back down and then jack up the other side and do the other side. But you have to jack up both sides of the car and you have to do uh, both end lengths at the same time. Otherwise you just can't push the sway bar up and down. It's just a pain in the ass. So uh, there is your tip for the sway bar end lengths. Uh, I'm gonna get into the bump steer kit when I get over here to this side, all right? All righty. So I uh, get the sway bar end lengths all in. Uh, now to get off this tie rod, you will have a castle nut with a uh, cotter pin. Uh, get that cotter pin out and then that castle nut is an 18 millimeter. So get that castle nut off and now it's time to take a hammer to this tie rod and get this thing out of here. Look at this. Look at this. That thing is absolutely shot. Wow. All right, let's get this thing off. All right, so here's what you want to do. Uh, mark the center of this ball joint, this tie rod on link. All right, and then you're going to want to measure from the end to that center. And this is a little bit difficult to do. Uh, it's definitely difficult to do while holding a camera. Uh, so you can find a way to hold on to this. There we go. And measure this at the same time. And Looks like about five and seven sixteenths, which is the exact measurement from the other side. The other side was two. Then what you want to do is grab the new Heim joint tie rod on link, all right? And you want to unthread this. Can't really do it while holding the camera, uh, but you want to unthread this. Mm, this one's tight. The other one I was able to get out by hand, but you want to unthread that and then measure this so that it's the same. Uh, LMR actually has a really good video uh, on them putting this kit in, all right? Uh, and then I'll show you what to do next. All right, so uh, we got everything all set up here. Uh, once you get this distance right from the center of this to the end to match your old 
tie rod, uh, then you wanna hand thread this on and then hold on to this. You can use uh, an adjustable wrench uh, or a pair of vice grips. And then I think this is a 21 millimeter. You wanna lock this down, tighten this up, uh, make sure that this shaft doesn't spin and then tighten these up against each other. Uh, you wanna tighten this one up. Lord, I can't remember what size this is. I think I had to use a, an adjustable wrench on this though. I didn't have, it's bigger than 21, it's bigger than seven eighths. Uh, I didn't have this one. Um, you wanna tighten this up and then Basically what we're looking to do is, let's see if I can get an angle on this correctly. Uh, you want the angle of the tie rod to be the same as the angle of your control arm, right? So we don't want the tie rod like down here, right? We want the tie rod at the same angle. So then to do that, uh, the bump steer kit has a bunch of shims. And I use the same shim number on each side, all right? Uh, and then you wanna get this stud in here, uh, tighten this up. I think that's a 19 millimeter. Tighten that up. Uh, again, you could just hold this with uh, an adjustable wrench, crescent wrench or a, uh, whatever a pair of vice grips uh, is what I used. Uh, and then tighten up this 19 millimeter up here. Uh, get that tight and then you can slide on your end link against your shims and get this done, get this tight. Uh, this is a 26, 22, 24, I can't remember. Uh, Lord, I already put it away too. Um, I think it's a 24, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so you want to tighten that up. And then get everything put back together and go take her for a drive. Well, uh, this thing definitely handles a hell of a lot better. Uh, we got rid of just a ton of play in the steering wheel. Um, I used to have a really big issue that uh, basically if there was like a like a rut in the road or like a groove in the road um, because the width on these tires uh, it would grab that groove and just pull really fucking hard um, that is almost completely gone which just absolutely amazes me uh, I got a big traffic circle here so I gotta cut this video hold on but my steering wheel is a little off. Uh, let's see if I can straighten this out. So I'm just a, just a little off on the steering wheel. So, I mean, it definitely has to go in and get an alignment. But seriously, uh, those, those tie rods were done. Um, the, the boots on the, on the ends were all cracked. The grease was falling out. And this, this bump steer kit is absolutely great. I really, this is wonderful. Um, tightened this steering right up. Uh, I think I'll probably eventually get, uh, a solid steering shaft, but uh, for now, I definitely don't need it. Uh, the rag joint is actually not in terrible shape. It must not be because now I have basically no play in the steering wheel. So it's definitely the tie rods. So I'm definitely happy to uh, get this buttoned up. Um, it's still jumping uh, when I back out of the driveway. Uh, I did find out that that is actually... Uh, it's tough to say the word normal, but it is normal. Uh, basically, the way the steering geometry on Mustangs work, um, when you back up and you have really wide tires, uh, the tires grab the pavement and you're basically dragging the tires 
uh, across the pavement when you are backing up and you, you pull it hard and angle hard in reverse. So I'm pretty happy to get this all straightened out. So that is that. Now you guys know uh, how to fix your steering wheel if it's off and how to fix your uh, bump steer. All right, all right guys. So uh, I hope you guys get your steering taken care of. Uh, this definitely helped me out with the Mustang. Um, that bump steer kit seriously feels fantastic. Um, and I think that dropping the uh, sway bar end lengths definitely helped too. Um, and now my steering wheel is not crooked. Uh, it's centered on the, on the gauge cluster, which was just absolutely driving me nuts. Um, but the car handles great. Uh, steering wheel's just a little bit off to the right. So I uh, definitely have to take it in for alignment. So if you guys do the bump steer kit, uh, you, you have to go get an alignment. Uh, and that's, that's all there is to it. So uh, hopefully you guys get this taken care of the same as I did. And your Mustang handles 10 times better, just like mine did. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.